Now we're going to talk about the boost converter. And the boost converter is a converter that takes the input voltage and increases that voltage at the output. So here is the topology for the basic boost converter. Remember in switch mode power supplies, we always have an active switch and usually we have a passive switch. So our active switch is now here and our passive switch, the diode is here and our inductor is now here. So this configuration is slightly different than the buck converter and because we rearrange these switches and inductors, we actually get a different function from it. And again, we're boosting up the voltage. So if this voltage is 10 volts, the output must be greater than or equal to that voltage. So let's break this down again into our two different switching phases. We're gonna start with when S is on, then we have this basic circuit diagram, right? The components, the inductor, the capacitor, resistor, those are all the same. We just have to figure out which switches are on. And when we have our active switch, this switch is being turned on, so this is short, right? Switch is on, closed, so we are pulling this down to ground. So this node then becomes ground during S on. Now let's check this diode. This voltage is now pulled down to ground, as we can see here. The diode is going to the right, and this voltage is going to be a, the output voltage. And again, we are going to assume, as Valerie is stating, we're in CCM, continuous conduction mode, and steady state average. So this voltage will be positive, and it'll be relatively steady. So this diode, this high, voltage is high, this is voltage is zero, will be reverse biased, so it will not be turning on. So this is our simplified circuit diagram during S on. Then we can go to S off, and this time we are turning our active switch off, so this is definitely open. So then we have to look at the state of the second, the passive switch, in this case the D. If we assume, as we talked about before, that it's in continuous conduction, meaning that this current must be flowing, this inductor current will have to find a path to go through, and so the current will force this diode to be on and go in this direction. Of course, if the inductor current does reach zero, then the diode will actually turn off automatically because it's a passive switch. But for now, we're going to assume continuous conduction mode, meaning that we're switching between these two states. One thing I wanna mention about this inductor, so again, the inductor is key to DC-DC converters. In one of these phases, we're essentially charging up the inductor, which is here. So here, we're pulling this down to ground. Remember our positive, negative, this is the direction that we measure the voltage over the inductor. Here, we're pulling it down to ground and we're putting energy from V in, I didn't label all these, sorry, V in into this inductor. And then when we release it, the energy in the inductor is going to, inductor is going to start to dissipate. So usually in these phases, the first phase is charging up the inductor, and then the second one is releasing that energy from the inductor. So now if we want to derive a relationship between the input and the output, we have to also look at our inductor current. And remember, our control variable, the thing that we can control, is the on time of this switch, which is we can represent as D, the duty ratio. So we're gonna derive a relationship between the input voltage, output voltage, in terms of D. To do that, of course, we look at the inductor current. And in this case for the boost converter, the inductor current and the input current are exactly the same. To figure out this relationship, we just need to look at whatever the inductor current is, we're gonna balance that. So we know that we're gonna charge up our inductor first, so we're gonna get some positive increase here. And we know that the inductor voltage is gonna be V in here. So if we do all of our math again, we'll see the slope here is just gonna be V in over L. And then when we switch to our second state here, the voltage over the inductor is gonna be V in 
minus the average value of v out. So let's write that here. And that's actually going to be decreasing. Let me write that first. So it's going to be v in minus the average of v out all over l. So to ensure that this is actually decreasing, the output voltage is going to be higher than the input voltage, right? Because it's boosting up. So if you look at this equation, V in minus a larger value is going to be negative. So we can ensure that it's actually going to be decreasing here. And again, since we're in steady state and continuous conduction mode, we know that these point, the value beginning of T and at the end of T, must be the same. So then we can use this equation and we can balance the voltage and the time here. So let's write that equation over here. So during this time period, the slope here is going to be Vn over L. And the time during that time period, it's going to be dt. Okay, so that's this change, our change in our i. So we can actually also represent this as delta il if we want during CCM. And then that same value has to be, has to come back to the same value on, on this side. So it's going to be equivalent to the negative of this slope times the time period. It's going to be negative, and we're going to have v in minus the average v out over L. And then we're going to multiply by this time period, which is 1 minus d times t. 1 minus d times t, I hope everyone can still see that. We're going to cross some common terms out because we're just trying to determine the relationship between the voltages and d. We see l's are the same and the t's are the same here, so cross those out. And now let's break this down a little bit further. So now you have vi, d is equal to, and let's just do this slowly, we're going to do negative v in plus the average of v out, this multiplied by 1 minus d. So we can rewrite that here, we have v in d, so we're going to take 1 times this quantity, vi plus the average of v out, then we're going to multiply this by negative d and add it here. So we get negative d times this vn, so you get dvi, negative d times average d, or average v out. Again, we're going to see some simplifications. We see that these two terms are exactly the same, so we can get rid of those. And now we can simplify a little bit more. Negative vn, and we're going to get plus average v out, and we can simplify this, we can get a 1 minus d here, and for simplicity we can move this guy over here. So here's one way to write this expression, 1 minus d, parentheses. So here is one way to write this equation. So if we know the v out that we want, the v in that we want, then we can calculate the d based on that, and we can figure out the values. Or if we know our v in and we know our d, we can calculate our v out. So one way that if this is more commonly rewritten is to find v out, the average v out. You move this down here, so it's v in times 1 over 1 minus d. Again, we've taken this relatively you know, complicated switching circuit, and because we make these assumptions about its operating mode, we can boil it down to just these two different switching states, look at the balance of the inductor in CCM and steady state, and we can derive this pretty basic relation between these two. So this equation got cut off over here. I just moved it right here to rewrite it. Um, so this is the equation that you need to remember for the boost converter.